Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte RSA Edition. Uh, today is the third day, the last exhibition day, but not the last day of RSA. And me and Mark are here again. My name is Corey Nockreiner, by the way, and this I'm is, of course, Mark Liberty, as always, one of our big threat researchers. And a great day at the booth today. It's the last day you can come. So if you didn't visit us in South Hall 923, unfortunately you can't tomorrow, but we'll definitely share some of the images on social that we, we did there. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about today's conference. I think we both saw a couple different talks. I'll say that I kind of started with some of the early keynotes and they were okay. One of the keynotes wasn't even security related. It was a, a TED talk guy that does a, a wait but why talk on procrastination. Huh. If you're interested, I'll, I'll link his TED talk. Basically, it was the same talk you can get on YouTube. That was kind of fun, but not really security related. Uh, what did you see that was cool? I actually went to several presentations today, but I think the one that actually stood out with me was actually a really high level one, but still super interesting. It was a principal architect at FireEye oh, cool. talking about a North Korean threat actor they've been tracking who deals primarily in cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency based attacks. Gotcha. Uh, okay. They called them uh, Temp Hermit, is their wow. attack name. They Temp don't have Hermit. a full APT name yet. Did um, they say why they named it that way? I'm always curious. He didn't, and I was going to Google it to try and figure out because it's a very interesting name. But yeah. Temp Hermit, and they say they, uh, they're very close to the Lazarus group that they've been tracking, another North Korean threat actor. Yeah. And they primarily deal with uh, espionage of companies that uh, are part of sanctions against North Korea, which was interesting. Uh, they do, they primarily attack states that North Korea is kind of against, like South Korea and the United States. Yeah. And they also still do some... Remind me, Lazarus was possibly related to Sony Pictures. Exactly. So they're, they're a group that... No, usually nation state actors are all about intellectual property or espionage, mm -hmm. but I think there's something kind of interesting about this. So group. he was saying that one of their primary goals is to, uh, is in regards to money for North Korea, which is why cryptocurrency falls into this too. They're trying to A, find ways of getting around sanctions, B, uh, earning money on the side and laundering money. Uh, they actually believe that this group was behind WannaCry, oh, wow. which didn't earn a tremendous amount of money, but hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars or so is a decent yeah. amount um, and there are a few other attacks they went over that they thought that uh, this temp permit group may have been behind including some confirmed by South Korea as well it was just That's a very interesting talk sounds see. interesting and it's Tracking definitely group. interesting seeing uh, nation states with monetary interests yeah but you could see like a country like North Korea that has sanctions you know yep. they're definitely not one of the richest com countries no. out there so you know, I think it's scary enough having nation states doing espionage, having them starting to do what cyber criminals do, it's extra scary. That yeah. sounds great. It was really interesting. Yeah. Did you see anything cool? Absolutely. So besides the keynote, which started me off slow, I saw a bunch of other presentations. Uh, one of my favorites, though, was on the security and privacy of machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year's prediction, I talked about how attackers could use machine learning and AI, too. It's a huge buzzword here in security. We definitely use machine learning in, in a lot of things. Uh, WatchGuard even uses machine learning to start scoring some of our things that threat detection response does. But there's not a lot of research on how adversaries, you know, it, it's not about them using machine learning for attacks, but it's how they may game machine learning models. Mm -hmm. So how can you actually take a machine learning model and get it to falsely classify things? Uh, you, you probably know, like with a lot of the anti-spam reputation engines, once a, a spammer figures out the cloud-based source for that, they can start poisoning it. And these, this was done by a, a research staff a member of Google Brain, and he actually talked about different techniques you could use to mix up machine learning classifications. Some fun things, I mean, there's a number of papers over the years he showed. One is like a, a image learning can like figure out that something's a panda. But he showed mathematically and also visually how just doing a pixel level gradient shift of that image where the other image looked just like a panda to you and I too, uh, but suddenly it was identified as a horse. <laughs> and if you know anything about machine learning, it will say this is a panda with 67% confidence. The horse was at 97% confidence, so it actually had more confidence in the misclassification. So that was 
one of many examples he showed, even showed how it could affect the physical world. I mean, we're using machine learning for uh, autonomous cars. Mm -hmm. They drive, they see things in the world, and they use image recognition to figure things out. So they showed like a picture of a banana in the physical world, a uh, classifier calling it a banana, mm -hmm. but then they had Google researchers that made this special sticker. You just put it on the table that the banana is on, and suddenly the only difference in the picture with the banana is this sticker, and suddenly the banana becomes a toaster. Again, with a higher level of confidence. So think about people in the real world. You know, you could imagine putting a sticker on a human being, and suddenly the car doesn't realize it's a human being anymore. That could be bad. All right. And while they used images a lot, kind of to teach us to show the the average non mathematician how this worked, you you could see how it affects malware classification too, right? I mean, the way we largely use uh, machine learning and security is malware classification. So if a bad guy can figure out how your machine learning engine algorithm works, he can actually, you know, what you say is malware, he can start to poison those results and have a benign file show up as malware, have a non-benign file become clean if he understands how it works. Interesting. Yeah. That was one other interesting thing too, like black box analysis, you know, it's very easy to start to figure out, to poke at a machine learning algorithm if you can get access to its inputs and its outputs. Like if you have a web-based uh, image submission thing so you can see yourself submitting an image and see how the machine learning algorithm classifies it. Even if you don't know what's going on inside, you kind of can learn over time how that works. But really the way machine learning works, you don't even have to know how their algorithm is. If you as an attacker write your own machine learning algorithm to do the exact same thing, five different types of machine learning algorithms tend to classify on the same things when you train them with similar sets of data with similar goals. Hmm. So they showed how you didn't even have to know how X security company's machine learning algorithm works. You just write your own using a similar technique, using a lot of malware versus benign files. And even though your algorithm might use you know, k-means clustering instead of log logistic regression, it will tend to classify in similar ways and you can use the ways you evade your own machine learning algorithm to evade others as well. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I found it fascinating. It probably mathematically was above <laughs> my head. You know, there's not many times I use Y with the hat symbol over it to figure things yes, out in the my day-to-day -day yes. anymore. But it was an excellent talk. There were other good ones, but that was probably the big one. Cool. Yeah. So another fun day, and by the way, preview tomorrow, we'll probably be talking about Mark's talk, which is uh, Friday, where he's talking about Ethereum. Yep. That's it for today's news, though. Thanks for watching. See you guys.